my aunt will be down presently, Mr. Nuttall. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me, said a very self-possessed young lady of 15. Privately, Mr. Nuttall doubted whether these visits to strangers would help in curing his nerves, and remembered how his sister worried that his nerves will be worse from the sadness of not knowing anyone there where she previously lived. Do you know many people around here? asked Denise. Hardly a soul. My sister was staying here, you know, some four years ago. She gave me letters of introduction to some of the people here. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt? Well, only her name and address. Oh, I see. Hmm. <gasps> her great tragedy just happened three years ago, said the child. Her tragedy? Asked Frampton. You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon. Has that window got anything to do with the tragedy? Out through that window, three years ago, her husband and her two young brothers went off for their day's shooting. In crossing the moor to their favorite snipe shooting ground, they were all three engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog. They never came back, and their bodies were never recovered. Poor aunt always thinks that they will come back someday, they and the little brown spaniel that was lost with them, and walk in at that window just as they used to. That is why the window is kept open every evening till it's quite dusk. I hope Vera has been amusing you. She has very been interesting. I hope you don't mind the open window. My husband and my brothers will be coming home directly from shooting and they always come this way. To Frampton, it was purely horrible. He made an effort to turn the talk onto a less ghastly topic. The doctors agree in ordering me complete rest, an absence of mental excitement, and avoidance of anything in the nature of violent physical exercise, said Frampton. Here they are at last, just in time for tea. Who was that who bolted out as we came up? A most extraordinary man, a Mr. Nuttall, could only talk about his illnesses and dashed off without a word of goodbye. One would think he had seen a ghost. I expect it was the Spaniel. He told me he had a horror of dogs. He once was haunted into a cemetery by a pack of pariah dogs and had to spend the night in a newly dug grave. Enough to make anyone lose their nerve. Romance at short notice was her specialty. The end.